Okay. Now we're going to get started with the program. Let's see how AD is eating most of the oxtails in the room. I think he's ready to eat. He told me to call him up quick or else he might go to sleep. That's the way I am after I eat a big meal. I eat it five minutes late, I'm, I'm, I'm asleep all the way. But I just want to say this about uh, Vice President uh, Gosher. How many people here have been to the field house? The field house, the football field house. Okay, let me ask this another way. How many people have not been to the field house? Oh, that's, okay, that's, that's not bad. Well, if you've been to the field house, you know that uh, in the span of just one year, Athletic Director Gosher has done something no other athletic director has done at Florida A&M University. Nobody else has accomplished what he's done in one year. The renovation of that field house, somewhere between 700000 and a million dollars when it's all said and done. And that's just part of the deal. The football leadership used to go on trips to, throughout the land in the north and the south and the east and the west and bring home $50,000, $70,000. This year they brought over, home over $500,000. This, this guy is something special. We got to keep him happy now. <laughs> want him to be happy. We want Coach Simmons to be happy. We don't want these people to go anywhere. That's why uh, we can't stop and relax. We got to keep doing what we're doing. And I got a major pledge I'm going to tell you before the program's in that I'd like for you to participate in uh, that I'm sure you're going to love to hear. With that, now I will give you the Vice President and Athletic Director of Florida University, Athletic, Mr. Courtney Boshe. Thank you, Eddie. Eddie, I appreciate that, and I, I hate always following you because I got some big shoes to fill. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll take a few minutes uh, here and just tell you about some of the great things that are happening. But uh, as Eddie told you earlier, I did eat about half the oxtails in the room. So. I gotta wake everybody up, but I hope there's some rattlers in the house, right? Oh, yeah. All right. Now y'all know football season is in a couple weeks, right? So I, I need to know if there's some rattlers in the room. Yeah. All right, good, good, good. So great to be here with you today. Um, again, it's been a it's been a challenging year, but it's been a very rewarding year. You know, we we took this for granted. We took getting together to talk about our great university for granted. Um, but again. We're really excited about what's to come with Florida A&M Athletic. Um, you know, we had some schools that, that tried to come steal our coach, and we told them we're not, we're not done yet, right? You know, so we do have to keep Coach Simmons happy. Eddie, I'll tell you, I'm happy as long as our, our kids continue to graduate and we continue to put our best foot forward. And so that's what I'm all about. Um, again, uh, success, we can't spell it without you guys. And everything that we've done in this past 18 months has been because of your dedication, your support, your trust. Because uh, again, there, there were some dark days where some dark clouds were over us where people didn't really want to trust what we were talking about, right? Uh, Eddie and I, I'll take one of your stories or I think when I first got here, they said, uh, y'all hired this glorified janitor to come up in here and run our program. I said, you know, I got some shoes older than him, right? All that other stuff. And uh, I saw that individual who, who called me that glorified janitor, you know, when I first got here. And I saw him on the tour. You know, we were raising about a half a million dollars. And I said, hey, uh, I think you needed a janitor to come clean up some of this uh, <laughs> that we had on our hands. It, I, I won't say the word, Eddie. Uh, but anyway, long story short, it, it's been one of the greatest honors and privileges of my life to serve this university. Now, there's some business we got to talk about. Yes, we've done some really, really significant things to take our program where it always should have been. Okay, So yes, we've invested a million dollars in the football field house, but we're not done. We renovated the locker room. We renovated coaches' offices. We still got a couple of things that we got to do. We don't have meeting space. So you think about it. We 
you got 120 guys, a football team, and the head coach doesn't have anywhere to address the whole team. We need to build a meeting room. That's next. Okay? So our work is not done, and I'm going to need each and every one of you guys to help us get there. As we talk about Bragg Memorial Stadium, I think everyone's seen the progress. But we're not done yet. So phase one, it will be done on time for the first game. Uh, matter of fact, as soon as I leave here, I've got to go meet a couple of our county commissioners to do a tour over there because they gave us 10 million, but I can promise you this, I'm going to ask for some more, right? They, they, gave, they gave the folks across the streets a little bit more, so we're going to ask for some more. And, uh, and I'm going to need all of, all, of, all of my 220 club members to raise a little cane if they don't give it to us, all right? And so we're going to go back, we're going to ask for some additional money, uh, but we are planning to start the other side as soon as Coach Simmons wins the SWAT championship and these coaches here in Tallahassee in December, all right? So as soon as that's over with, we are going to demolish the press box, demolish the seats, and start that project. Uh, so this year will be one of those years where I'm telling everybody, pardon our progress. It's not going to be perfect, all right? But again, work with us. The end result is going to be something that our program needs and has deserved for a very, very long time. So again, as we roll out this next iteration, this next campaigns, what's happening, I need your support. I need you to spread the word. As we talk about, we know Rattlers all across the country. And we're going to ask them for $1,000. We're going to ask for $2,000. We're going to ask them to give until, as Dr. Robinson says, they go none. All right? But that's what it takes to run a first-class program. Coach Simmons, 2019 Tallahassee Man of the Year. Combatant gun violence, right? Right here in our own community. We have to create an environment and a space for our student athletes or some or a place that we can recruit our kids to where they feel safe, where they don't feel like they have to have a gun. We're developing young men and women. And I heard a coach say this one time and it resonated. It's real hard to recruit a kid from the hood to the hood. All right? So we've got to make sure that Everything that we're about, everything that our look, our feel, everything is first class because we know what Rattlers do. So we talked about the fundraising tour this summer. We, we traveled uh, to nine cities and raised a half a million dollars. I was absolutely stunned. But it shows us that as Rattler Nation, if we come together, there's nothing that we can't do. There's nothing we can't do. So next year, we've already, we're working on dates. Uh, we plan to do it again, and we're, we're going to try to double up on that. All right, and so we're going to go around the country. We're going to continue to do that. But I will say this, and it didn't get enough attention if you ask me, but here in Tallahassee, I think was our biggest number. We had $121,000 raised right here at home. That's pretty significant, folks. That's pretty significant. And so, again, we wouldn't have been able to reach that goal without you, without your support. Now, I'll go into a couple of other things. There are some changes that are on the horizon. Um, it's not out of, it, it's totally out of necessity. But there will be some growing pain. So how many people have their tickets? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So here's one of the things that we're working on. Obviously, this year we implemented digital tickets. Okay. That's different, especially for uh, my more seasoned rattlers. You know, they don't like that, right? I know that. We are working, and I'm, I'm working with the ticket office. And again, remember, the ticket office does not report to us in athletics. So it's not as easy as me picking up the phone and saying, do it, OK? But we will work with you. If you contact the ticket office, let them know that you want your tickets, hard, hard tickets, you will be able to get them, OK? Uh, we'll be able to do that. But as we move forward, we're still going to push digital tickets because COVID is still here. The pandemic is still a part of this new normal, all right? And so bear with us. If you have any issues, just contact us. Uh, I think I took care of Colonel Joe yesterday. He called me and said, hey, I had an issue. We took care of it. We were able to, to rectify it today. So work with us. Bear with us. Get your tickets. Uh, get your vac vaccinations. If you hadn't already, I assume everybody in this room is. Um, wear your mask because, again, We've got a lot of good things that are happening this fall. Uh, I met with Dr. Chipman, Chipman and uh, the Marching 100 yesterday. Uh, they're ready to bring the heat. 
All right, and so we need each and every one of you all in the, in the stands to help us uh, give everybody that comes to Tallahassee a hard time. We'll talk about that. But again, if you have questions about your tickets or have issues, contact the athletic department. We'll walk you through that process, okay? Uh, so again, I've heard it. I know there's some concerns. Uh, we will work with you. We've got a little bit of time, but we'll make sure that everybody gets their tickets. I promise you, if I have to deliver them myself, and we will do that. All right, a couple of upcoming events. So here, um, over the next couple of weeks, you are going to see um, several of our, our teams out here in Tallahassee uh, promoting the beginning of our football season. Uh, we've got an activation that's gonna happen at Academy Sports. Uh, I think walk-ons, we're gonna have a watch party uh, for the Orange Blossom Classic there for those who aren't going to attend and do some things. But we are taking, we're not taking no as an answer for a lot of our local businesses, okay? And so privately and publicly, we've been out here in Tallahassee pushing people to say, hey, we see you got a sign over there, but you don't have one over here, all right? And so here over the next month or so, we're gonna be real public about that. We are going to push and make sure that everybody in Tallahassee knows what businesses support Florida a and &M. And then we're also gonna be very public about those who don't, all right? All right? So as we do that, word of mouth is, is, uh, is real strong here in Tallahassee, I found out. But again, we're not gonna take no for an answer. We spend our dollars just like everybody else does. Florida a and football has a $30 million economic impact to this city and this county every year, all right? And so again, our kids are gonna have a, an experience that's second to none. Our coaches are going to have the resources to go recruit the best kids. Now, I'll thank the 220 Club for your campaign around sports nutrition. You guys have made such a significant difference. I think over the past year, Coach Simmons, all these coaches, we've seen student athletes' bodies change drastically. And it's because they're eating right, they're healthy, and that is solely because of the 220 Club, your commitment, your dedication to support these young men and women, okay? And so thank you, thank you, thank you. Continue to do that. Um, as Eddie said, there's nothing that we can't do together. Sometimes we gotta talk about who's doing what and the approach, but we're gonna get there. And so um, really, really excited about the direction and the support from the 220 Club, um, and really the direction of our, our, our athletic program. The SWAC has no idea what's really about to happen to it, um, but that's okay. That's okay. I think what did they they had us pick what third coach? Second, second, third. Both of them are wrong. All right, <laughs> but that's okay. We 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 will we'll take care of that uh, later on in the year. But we can't do it without y'all. So need you in the stands. I need you tailgating. Uh, obviously, we're going to do that in a safe manner. We want to take care of everybody. If you can, if you feel safe, we need you in Miami to start this thing off right for those who are coming. Um, and again, I can't tell you how much we appreciate your support and your dedication about what's to come. Uh, outside of football, there's a couple other things that are happening with this move to the SWAT. Um, we, are, we just signed a, a consortium or a deal with some other Power Five conferences. You're going to see Power Five institutions come to Tallahassee and play at our place, right? Never been done before, all right? And so when they do show up, I need you guys to show up and show out like we normally do, right? And so there's gonna be some exciting things happening. Um, again, I, I can't tell you how much I'm, I'm so proud of our student athletes getting through last year. This testing stuff, getting vaccinated is not easy for them. I mean, I, I think our student athletes are testing every day. That's a commitment in itself. And so we'll continue to do that. All these coaches have, have sacrificed a lot of things that people don't realize. But your investment, your support has allowed us to beef up our coaching staff, uh, some of them here today. Um, we, how many people know what a director of football operations is? Okay, all right, very good. That's probably one of the most important roles in a football program because there's so many administrative duties that the head coach can't get to one person. He's got to worry about calling plays, 
chasing knuckleheads down to go to class, making sure they got the classes, talking to mama, uh, recruiting the next iteration, uh, you know, donor engagement, all those other type things. But the people that really make the execution happen behind the scenes is, is a director of football operations. We didn't have one. And so because of your investment and your support, we were able to fully fund one. Uh, Assistant Athletic Director, Mr. LaTroy Johnson here, who's on our staff. Um, so we welcome him to the Hill. And he is, is really the guy kind of behind Coach Simmons that will be orchestrating and managing day-to-day uh, -day operations of our football program. Very, very pivotal role. Championship programs have that, and we have one now. Uh, so, so very proud of that. Um, we didn't have a running backs coach. So on top of all of those other duties, Coach Simmons was – all in plays and being a head coach, but he was also coaching the running backs every day at practice, okay? And so because of your investment, your commitment, uh, we've been able to hire a, a, a running backs coach. Uh, we go way back with Mr. Shane Tucker here at the end of the table, and I'll let coach introduce him later. But that's because of you all, all right? Um, we've made some, some changes, administrative changes with uh, the direction that we're handling our, our athletic equipment and apparel. Um, and Mr. Doug Lipscomb, we're bringing him uh, in as well. And so, again, these are the things that a lot of people don't see on Saturdays. But to get there and to make those things run first class, these people are working behind the scenes. Um, and so, again, can't, can't thank you guys enough for your commitment. Um, again, I, I tell people I, I have a, a get-to job. I don't have to. I get to do this. I get to serve these student athletes. I get to serve you all as alumni and donors. And I, I'll tell everybody, and I've told people across the country, I've got some of the best alumni and donors uh, anywhere else, right? And so everything people said we couldn't do here at Florida A&M, we're going to do. We're going to do. And I appreciate your support. Dr. Walker, I, I, I got my orange handkerchief, so don't get me too bad after this, all right? I know it. Yeah, I know. I got you. I got you this football season. All right. We, we back. We back now. All right. So, um, but again, uh, take care of yourselves. Um, I can't thank the Rattler Boosters, President Cobb, and so many of you all who are involved, uh, intrinsically involved in the 220 Club, the Rattler Boosters, uh, the Rattler Athletic Fund, and all of our initiatives. All right. That's how we're going to move the needle together. And so, um, I know these days I don't, I'm not as accessible as I I would like to be, um, you know, because I'm, I'm somewhere being a glorified janitor. Uh, but we are going to continue to clean it up. We talked about it, you know, uh, you know, we're graduating our student athletes, we're winning championships. Uh, we're going to win one here in football here pretty soon. Um, but again, the championship level resources that this group, this room, and so many of our other supporters have provided is the reason why. Not Courtney Gaucher. You guys are the reason why. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll, I'll take a few questions, and uh, then I'll turn it over to Coach Simmons. That's who I really want to hear from. You need to talk about parking. Parking, all right. So parking, very similar methodology, okay. Uh, it will be sent to you digitally. For those who don't do digital, okay, we will work it out, and we will get you a hard pass. One of the reasons why we're doing digital is because we had a lot of counterfeiting. We had a lot of people parking in other people's parking spaces. And so the objective, we're going to send out passes digitally. When you show up at a certain checkpoint, hey, I got my pass, we'll put a hang tag in your mirror. But we do know that we have some, some rattlers who aren't going to do that or just not versed in that, okay? We're going to work with you. And so, uh, again, you're going to see a lot of these things happen over the next couple of weeks. So bear with us. If you have questions, concerns, anything, feel free to reach out, um, and we'll get you taken care of. I, Promise you we will. Yes, ma'am. I believe you are asking if parking numbers are going to be repainted. And the answer is yes. Um, if you drive by Bragg Memorial Stadium right now, there's a lot happening. Um, the entire hill where tailgating used to be has now been black surfaced, uh, repainted. It will be fresh. Um, and we're going to try to make it as nice as we can because, again, remember, Construction's not totally done. As soon as, this, as soon as we get through these four or five games here in Tallahassee, we're going to start construction on the other side. 
And at that point, we're going to totally redo the entire parking lot. So, so bear with us, but yes, they will be freshly painted. So for an example, and one of the things, the benefits of digital, you'll, if you have more than uh, one parking pass, how will that work digitally, okay? You will get both of them in your, uh, your Ticketmaster account, okay? You can pull it up on your phone, you'll see both of them there. There's a button, or a, you can click to transfer that to anybody you want, and it'll come to their phone just like a text message, okay? And so you'll have that ability to do that per game. Uh, but again, if if that's a challenge for you, contact us. We'll be getting those out over the next couple of weeks. Yes, ma'am. Director Crochet, um, I don't have anything um, to put in my hand. I'm unvested champion. Uh, is the uh, Orange Blossom Classic ticket part of that package? Yes, ma'am. And we actually just received those today in the mail. Uh, so over the next couple of days, you'll be contacted. Uh, we'll get you your ticket. Okay. Yeah, uh, depending on your package. Uh, I believe you got two. I believe. Now, don't quote me on that, but I believe you got two. Come back to you. So a couple of things. Uh, so, <laughs> all right, so so Perry Street. Uh, we'll talk about Perry Street first. All right, so Perry Street. Uh, I'm with you on Perry Street. We need to we need to work on cleaning that up because what happens is, FAMU Athletics isn't getting a penny off of Perry Street. All right, and there's a lot of money being made. So I don't want to take any money from anybody's uh, you know plate, but there's a cost to do business. So we we are working on some things to make it a little bit more. Um, tighter for some of those unlicensed vendors and all those type of things on Perry. Um, it's not going to totally be eliminated, but we are kind of squeezing that piece. So I'm with you 100%. The, uh, the other thing as it relates to uh, the classic, that game probably won't move um, for a number of reasons. Um, just TV, marketing, all those type of things. When you get into playing Thanksgiving, uh, now you get into a whole other TV spectrum. We might get less money. So I don't see that changing anytime soon. Okay. Uh, let me jump here and then I'll jump there. Yeah. At the Orange Blossom Classic, will there be practice from social distancing? Uh, so, no. Uh, no. Not to be transparent, no. Um, the, the mandate that the governor has is in, there, there's no mask mandate, there's really no COVID mandates. And so all of these venues are going to be operating at 100% capacity. Okay. And so, and Bragg will be the very same way. Uh, there won't be any social distancing measures. We're gonna be operating at 100% capacity. And so we're encouraging people to get your vaccinations, uh, wear your mask, all right? Um, you know, that's our best shot, is, is people getting the shot, all right? Yes. If, if you renew, did you renew in 2020? Yes, sir. So your parking spot will be identical. I wouldn't necessarily say priority. Uh, all single game tickets went on sale August 1st. And so it's open to the public. Uh, so if you want some and you have a group sale or something like that, we can work with you to get you what you need, uh, but those went on sale effective August 1st. Single game tickets, including homecoming. Um, yes, so we were saying, uh, what?
So great point. A couple of things. Um, so first, I'll check on your tickets because two weeks they should have been there by now. So we'll check on that. The second thing, we and I mentioned it earlier, the FAMU box office doesn't report to athletic. So it's not, it's a little bit more difficult for us to ensure that deadlines are met because they don't report to me. Now, one of the things that I would say across the tracks, again, as you know, last year they went 100% digital. Their dissemination of their tickets, 90% of it's electronic. So their people are getting them instantly, okay? We're trying to catch up to that trend. Um, now they still do print some hard tickets, like we are going to still print some hard tickets. Um, but we've, we've got some things to clean up in the box office. That's another reason why resources and, and revenue generation and fundraising is important, because soon I, I want to take over my own box office so that we don't have these problems, right? But it takes money to do that. You gotta pay salaries of people to, to actually do those type of things um, per state regs. You know, I've, I've heard the conversation about volunteers. That's just, it's not an option for us. And so um, it's something that does keep me up at night, uh, but we'll work on it. And so I'll follow up and get your information. We'll make sure that happens. All right, one last question. All right, seeing none. So I will turn this show back over to, all right, there we go. Yes, sir. The, hunt, the stadium will be 100% uh, capacity. So both sides, um, obviously the east side will look a little bit different. It will be a little bit louder. Um, and then at the end of the season, that side will come down and we'll, we'll build a new one up. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, the north end zone will be open as normal. Uh, the one th change that you may see is it won't be totally buffet style because of COVID. It'll be, um, you will have servers. They'll put it in kind of like a to-go plate, you know, all those type of things so that we can encourage people to kind of get your food, get your drinks, and go back to your seats um, in that area. But, yes, it will be open. Uh, the restrooms, no. Uh, you know, we, we've kind of cleaned them up, painted a little bit because – at the conclusion of the season, that's part of the next phase. We're gonna demolish all of them and build new. And so this year, it will be another year uh, in their current form. Um, but after that, we will hope to bring them up as well. All right, thank you guys very much. And uh, appreciate you, Eddie. Uh, you know, you always have to bring the head coach up. You don't just let him come to the mic. That's the way I was treated when I was head coach of the St. Petersburg. I don't know why they laugh at that. I, we won the city championship. But, but it's always a, a, a pleasure for me to say of uh, people, the head football coach at the Florida a &M University of Atlas, Coach Willie Simpson. Good. Thank you, assistant head coach. Great to see everyone again. Um, obviously, I was here last week, so I won't uh, you know, bore everyone with a recap of everything we said last week. So really today, I just wanted to introduce the new additions to our staff. Uh, VP Gaucher mentioned a few of them, but I want to take this opportunity to introduce all of the new guys. Um, I'm only as good as the guys I work with. And I've been blessed to have a phenomenal staff. Um, we feel some much needed support staff positions. Uh, like A.D. Gaucher said, that really, really helps me do my job. Um, so, again, we'll start from the left here, and um, I'll tell a little bit about each of them, and then obviously if you want to ask individually uh, each of those guys, any of those guys' questions, we'll do so here at the end. But all the way down to my far left, um, pass, pass Eddie. Eddie's the first coach, but we'll <laughs> skip him. Um, Shane Tucker here um, is our newly appointed running backs coach. Um, Coach Tucker comes to us from, uh, was a player at Middle Tennessee State. 
stand up a little bit. Uh, was a player at uh, Middle Tennessee State University. Uh, was a highly recruited young man. Um, had a great career there. Uh, transitioned right into coaching uh, after playing. Has done some strength conditioning work. Worked at Austin P. And then went back to Middle Tennessee State uh, before he came to us as, as a running backs coach. Has been with us now for a little over a month and a half now. Uh, has done a phenomenal job with our running backs. Uh, if you've seen those guys, uh, Bishop Bonner has had by far his work, his best camp. Um, DeAndre Francis has you know come in as a true freshman and is going to be a contributor for us. And it's a testament to, to Coach Tucker's just tenacity. Um, he's a young guy. You know, he's close to their age. Bishop might be older than Coach Tucker. <laughs> And um, but he gets out there and runs around with them, does a really, really great job. And um, you'll see our run game improve tremendously um, because of the work that Coach Tucker is going to do with those running backs. So, um, Jane Tucker. Uh, to his left, uh, VP Goshi already uh, obviously mentioned him. Uh, Latroy Johnson is our director of football operations. Um, Troy and I go back. Yeah, yeah we'll give him a hand. Uh, Troy and I go back 20 years. Um, I met him back in 2000. Um, when I was at Clemson, he came in. Uh, he's a year behind me at Clemson. We spent uh, three years there together. Uh, once I got hired at Middle Tennessee State, a uh, few months later, he came on as the equipment manager. We lived together for, for a year. Uh, but again, have been you know, thick as thieves uh, for over 20 years now. And uh, we were actually able to steal him away from Jackson State. So not only did he come to help me do my job, he bought some trade secrets with him. <laughs> And so, and uh, if you ever get a little bit of time, he can give you some prime stories that, that you'll love to hear. Uh, but no, Troy's done a phenomenal job. He's you know, cut his teeth in the equipment room. Um, but again, he's a guy, much like VP Gaucher, who also started as an equipment manager. Troy actually trained Courtney, uh, you know, if you can believe that. Um, but again, he's a guy that's going to have a, a great career in administration as well. Very knowledgeable, um, great tenacity, very thorough. And, um, Came in and like I said, a lot of things were not done. You know, travel wasn't complete, meals, all of those operational things that it takes to run a successful program. Um, Troy's come in and cleaned all of that up in a short uh, period of time. So very, very blessed to have him here, and uh, you'll see a much cleaner operation, um, you know, because he's with us now. Um, next up, Doug Lipscomb. Um, Doug is out. Doug is our new head equipment manager. Um, I had a, trans had a change in that department. Um, Doug came to us a little over a month ago. Um, again, you think about football camp started three weeks ago, and uh, Doug got here about a week and a half before that. So you can imagine trying to make sure that 110 guys are outfitted with helmets and shoulder pads, you know, and, not, and it's not just as easy as you know, just throwing on a helmet or throwing somebody into a pair of shoulder pads. You have to make sure that these guys are fitted properly. All right, the number one way to prevent concussions is that your helmet fits the right way. The number one way to prevent shoulder injuries, labrums, um, all these different shoulder uh, injuries that, that football players endure is to make sure your shoulder pads fit properly. And uh, Doug had to come in and do that, had to check inventory, make sure that everyone had everything they needed as far as coaches and players um, across the board. So again, very, very important position here, one of the most important ones in our program. From a liability standpoint, the quickest way for us to get in any type of compliance is, uh, trouble is to have something go wrong in the equipment room. And so just his knowledge, his expertise, uh, spent years up at Middle Tennessee State uh, working with the basketball program there. Uh, that's where he met VP Gaucher, uh, came highly recommended, and um, le le left his little young child up in Atlanta to come be with us. And so we're very, very honored and blessed to have him here. But he's done a phenomenal job so far, and um, our, our equipment room is in, is in great shape now. Um, under the leadership of Doug Lipscomb, so excited to have him here as well. Uh, the next gentleman to my right here, uh, offensive line coach, co-offensive coordinator Ryan Stanchek. So um, obviously, you know, in the 2019 season, we did a lot of really good things. Um, won a lot of games, put up a lot of points. The one thing we did not do very well is run the football. And so, um, you know, once Coach Jackson transitioned on, uh, I was tasked with finding a run, uh, I'm sorry, no line coach who could come in and take our run game to the next level. Well, unfortunately for Coach Stanchek, fortunately for us, the head coach at Southern Miss, who we worked under, had just gotten let go. And so Coach was kind of in, you know, in that position that none of us want to really be in, kind of between jobs, looking for what's next, you know, had some great opportunities. Um, but 
Coach and I worked together back in 2014 at Alcorn State. And that year, we averaged about 300 yards rushing a game and won a national championship there at Alcorn State. So um, again, because of our relationship, because of uh, the ability to go back to being a coordinator, he became the coordinator at Alcorn State two years after I left, three years after I left. And so for him to get the coordinator title back you know, under his name and to come work for someone who he's familiar with uh, was something that really was a blessing to me. And um, again, I've seen a tremendous um, change in the offensive line, just the way they approach the run game, uh, the way they approach learning football. Uh, Keenan Forbes, um, who's a senior offensive lineman, one of our pro prospects, uh, who scouts come by and see every day, made the comment just a few days ago to our freshmen that this is the first year that he's learned football. That he's actually been taught more than his, just his assignment, right? So for us, in football, running a play, it's, it's about the what. You have to know what to do and how to do it. Well, pretty much every coach teaches the guys that, okay? What steps to take, who you're supposed to block, what routes you're supposed to run, all of those things. Well, the next phase is the why. Why am I asking you to do this thing this way? And then what is the defense trying to do to take advantage of, to try to stop us? And if I know that, then I have a better chance of knowing what's coming so that I can you know, defend it. And that's what coach is teaching the offensive linemen now. He's teaching them about coverages. He's teaching them about different fronts. He's teaching them about different pressure looks so that they can anticipate what's coming. And that's very, very important when it comes to the offensive line. And so just the knowledge that he brings, the experience that he brings, the expertise that he brings as an, as an offensive line coach who's played under and, and coached with some of the best ones out there, but also a guy who played at a high level, was a three-time All-American at West Virginia, um, had a brief stand in the NFL, but just brings everything that you look for an offensive line coach and play caller to the table. So he and Coach Black work extremely well together. It helped me out tremendously in game planning. And you'll see a football team this year, especially up front, that plays with a lot more tenacity than we played with in the past. And so very, very blessed to have Coach Ryan Stanchek here with us as OOC co -O offensive line coach. And then last but certainly not least, um, Coach Milton Patterson is our new de defensive line coach. Oh so the only change we had on the defensive side last year was obviously Coach Street moving on to Marshall. Um, well, Coach Street was the defensive coordinator, but he also coached the defensive line. And so we promoted from within on the defensive side, promoting linebackers coach Ryan Smith and safeties coach Brandon Sharp, the co-coordinators, so we had to fill the defensive line spot. We interviewed eight, eight individuals and went through a thorough um, process. Uh, took about a week and a half to, to get through all the interviews. And you know, at the end, we ranked all of the, each, each coach, all four defensive coaches and myself. Um, we all ranked the guys, the, the, the people that we interviewed. And coach was the only one of the eight who finished in everyone's top three. He was the only one. And so. Coach Patterson brings coordinator experience. He was previously the defensive coordinator at Fayetteville State. Uh, he's a coordinator at Clark Atlanta. Um, he's been a co defensive coordinator at Mississippi Valley State. And um, actually cut his teeth, started out in the profession at his alma mater, don't hold it against him, Jackson State. So, um, but we know where his loyalty lies and where, where he'll be on September 5th. But uh, like they tell us, we're loyal to who pays us. And uh, bam, you pays him, so he's gonna be, he's bleeding on the green right now. <laughs> and, uh, but Coach is a very, very tena uh, tenacious football coach. Um, again, you'll see a defensive unit, much like the offensive line, that plays with the level of energy, intensity, tenacity that you haven't seen you know, around here in a long time. Um, he's got a very deep position. A lot of players, probably the deepest defensive line group, definitely in the SWAC, arguably in, in FCS football, with the bodies that we have there who can all play. And so. Very excited about him. Um, very excited about all of these gentlemen. I mean, again, they complete our staff. Um, they make us complete. For the first time in four years here, we have a full coaching staff and a full support staff. Okay, for the very first time. And so to be a top-notch program and to sustain that level of success, you need a full staff. Right? Because again, if you don't, 
you have coaches doing multiple jobs, right? And I get paid, you know, fairly decently to be the head football coach, okay? That job shouldn't entail me checking on hotels and meals for our football team, right? I mean, I'll do it if I have to, because I got to make sure we're taken care of, but that shouldn't be a part of our job. Up until a week, a month and a half ago, Coach Stanchek, who's the co-offensive coordinator offensive line coach, had to deal with mess. So when it came to meals for our players during training camp, that was Coach Stanchek. So instead of taking Jordan White, TJ Lee, you know, all these young freshmen who are going to be really good players for us and getting them ready to play football, me with them separately, he's spending time on the phone with Tripp up in Mets to make sure that we got breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack for our football team every night. Shouldn't have to do that. Now, all those responsibilities turn over to Troy. The nutrition that you have graciously paid for for us. We have to make our run down to Piggly Wiggly to pick up, you know, bars and fruit from, from, from there. But no longer is it a coach or the GAs or even Cole, our strength coach. Troy facilitates that, right? And so all of those administrative things, which many people may think are very insignificant, but mean the world to us because it allows us to be more efficient, that's what we're able to do now. So you'll see coaches be able to coach. That's what we're brought here for. We're brought here to coach and make sure our guys graduate. That's it. Those are two primary things. Develop them as players and graduate them in their classes. So we'll be able to devote more time now to their studies. We'll be able to devote more time to the extra work that they need on the field to be the best version of themselves. And so, again, that's a direct testament to you guys for what you've done for us, for the support that you continue to pour into us. And, again, you'll see a, a product this year on the field that will make every Rattler proud. And, again, we're a week and a half away from that happening. We're very excited about going down to Miami Gardens, opening up in the Orange Blossom Classic, and um, hope to see all you guys there. Um, for you that can't, we're on ESPN2 at 3 p.m. So get in front of you. Set your recorders now, OK? If you don't know how to do it, get with Ed, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Mix Jackson could show him how to do it, and he could tell you how to do it. Because I know he doesn't know either. But, uh, <laughs> but look forward to seeing everyone. And um, again, like, like BP Goshe said, you know, we're still in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, and we all know um, the risk involved, but vaccinations, wearing your mask, all those things, even the booster shots now, are your, are, you know, all those things are our best defenses. So I would, I would love to go and see a packed house every week because our young men feed off that energy. All right, the March 100, best band in the land, is going to do their part. But we know the SWAC is no different than the MEAC, right? The band cannot play while we're in live game action, right? So they got to and hold all those brass instruments they have while we're playing. So that's where you come into, into effect. Because when it's third down and our defense needs to stop, it can't be the 100 that's blowing. It's got to be Rattler Nation that's roaring. Right? And so we need you guys there. All right, we're looking forward to it. And um, again, let's make sure we stay safe so we can do that. So at this time, we'll open up questions about any of these guys. If you want them to answer them, we'll have them come up. Um, any questions for me, uh, we'll take those at this time. We'll you said last week, you, okay. can you make sure you repeat the question so the people don't okay. talk at, they can't hear? Okay. okay. You said last week you were going to bring somebody in when Eddie was the shortest person in the world. That's Troy. That's, that's Troy. <laughs> that's, that's Troy. <laughs> yeah. That's my man, though, now. I mean, hey. Don't don't try them. Don't tell you. Don't let this, don't let it fool you now. We, pack some, we got a little Memphis story that we tell sometimes where y'all almost didn't get to see Coach Simmons because Troy about got us whooped in Memphis at the club. The two of us, he gonna take on the club. Like, no, we're not doing that. No, we got to get back to Murfreesboro. So he's a tough one. Mm -hmm. How do you three work together? Right. And who makes the final call of that play going on? Right. So the question is with basically co 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 coordinators on offense and, and me serving as a play caller, how do we make that work? Uh, well, one, we do it together. And so coach's expertise is run game. Okay? He knows the pass game, but his expertise is run game. Coach Black's expertise is pass game, right? And so all week, we sit together with the rest of the offensive coaches and we game plan. 
And so we look through cutups and we look at the opponent to see what they do against certain formations that we're going to you know, have on the field. And then we talk about it amongst it together, right? And so coach brings some great ideas to the table. Coach Black brings great ideas to the table. But so do our other coaches. All right? Coach Jelani Barasa brings great ideas. Coach James Spader has been a head coach, so he brings great ideas. And then as a staff, we decide what our game plan is going to be for that week. And so that's how we do it. So when it comes to calling the plays, I'll call the plays on Saturday, but we put the game plan together during the week. And then Coach Black calls most of the, most of the uh, plays during practice, which allows me to be freed up as a head coach to kind of roam around the field. Coach Stanchek has you know, 16 guys, offensive linemen, so he's spending most of his time making sure that those guys know what's going on. But everyone's heavily involved. And so obviously their opinions, Coach Stanchek, Coach Black's, kind of take a little bit more precedent than Coach Spade and Coach Barasa's. But we, we create an environment where everyone has input. Right, and then on Saturday, once we all decide what the game plan is going to be, then you know I'll call it on Saturday. But like Coach knows, if he says call the play, I'm going to call it. You know, if Coach Black says call this play, I'm going to call it, and that's just how it is. And so um, I've worked with Coach before. I've worked with Coach Black for many years, and now that they're working together, they they feed off each other tremendously. And so it's a it's a great trinity, so to speak, uh, with all of us who all have great offensive minds working together, so I think you'll see a much more explosive offense than you've seen even, even in the past. Okay, going into the stretch, I've watched a number of teams in the swag. Uh, some of those teams, the top tier teams in the swag, have outstanding play skills. How are we going to stack it up? <laughs> Yadi Ali is gone. So um, how are we going to look in the kicking game? Uh, right, so... Um, Kicking, kicking game, particularly place kicking, well, the, the best way to prevent a team who has a great place kicker is not let them take the field. So defensively, with Coach Patterson's help, we'll stop people. If they don't score, they don't line up to kick. If they don't score, they don't line up to kick an a, a, a extra point. If they don't get in field goal range, they can't kick a field goal. So we want to make sure that their punter gets the most work during the game, right? That's the goal. And so defensively, um, I have no doubt in my mind that we'll have – one of them not the top defenses in the conference, particularly even in the country, because of what, I, what we go against every single day. And, um, but, you know, if, if there's a stronger special teams unit in the SWAC, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see them. I mean, I don't think any of them can claim a punter who's finished first in the country and second in the country in punting, right? With the return guys we have, Xavier Smith, K. Dot, Jamar Sharid, Dede Oxendine, Bishop Bonnet, DeAndre Francis. If, them, if somebody can line up better returners, I'd like to see it. And then we got we got some we got a special surprise at kickers, so don't worry, we'll be fine in the kicking game. Yeah, we'll be just just fine. Right. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> as far as the run game, I'll, I'll talk about our schemes. I let coach talk about the tenacity, but we're we're zone scheme and gap scheme, which means we run zones and we run what they call gap schemes, so powers and counters and things of that nature. So, those are our two primary runs. Um, but I'll let coach just talk briefly about kind of his offensive line philosophy and you know how he brings tenacity to the position. So. Appreciate it, Coach. I like you. <laughs> You're my guy. You talk run game. That's awesome. Um, you know, run game wise too, it's a seamless transition. You know, working with Coach before, so you know, there's no earth shattering, you know, scheme necessarily. But like Coach said, zone, uh, gap schemes. Um, you know, that's primarily what we'll be, uh, depending on what they give us, what the defense dictates. So that's kind of what we'll do. We just got to play with pad level and uh, strain. You know, and the guys have done a great job this camp. You know, very excited, very excited about this group and, and uh, very excited to be here. Just so you guys know, my wife, Jessica, I got Bella. She's six years old. And then you're going to see a crazy man running around. You'll see it, Skyler, my little boy. So 
he, he's five. So I apologize if he, you know, gives you a high five too hard or anything like that. But, uh, but uh, very excited to be here. And run game wise, we're, we're, we're extremely fired up. But at the end of the day, it's what the defense gives us. You know, we, we Coach Simmons' offense, you know, they, they've lit it up, and, and I'm just excited to be a part of it. So, so it's one of those pooling plays, one of them pooling plays where, where the guard like wraps around uh, the guard or tackle. So, so we kind of joke around. I, I had a guy one time say, Coach, can you run one of those pooling plays? So, yes, sir, we'll, we'll do that. But it, it, it's when like uh, a guy on one side, he's wrapping around pooling, uh, like, like, like an arc type of deal. But not. Yes, sir. No, that's a great question. Right. Come on, Tom. You could ask Dr. Walker that now. <laughs> Tell Dr. You know what the, you know the gap scheme is. I would never sit in an audience and not know what I'm talking right. about. Right. Well, so basically, in a nutshell, zone zone schemes you run with the flow. So the lines are all working one direction, the backs going in the same direction. On a gap scheme, you're trying to divide the defense. So the line is blocking one way, and then one lineman is pulling another way, and the running backs following that guy. So we're trying to divide the defense a half to kind of hit it. Right. <laughs> That's that, that really, you, you know the gap schemes are. I'm waiting on my plays too. You ain't brought my plays yet. Coach, I heard in his day that he's going to finish third. I heard a second. So who? No, so as far as I predict the order finish, we're, preseason we've been picked to finish second on the East. So the SWAC now, because of the 12 teams, is, is divided in divisions. So there's an East division and a Western division. So we're in the East. Um, Alabama A&M, who won the spring season, is first. We're picked second. On the West, Alcorn is picked to win the West. And so um, they didn't do a, a necessary order of finish from 1 to 12. Um, so we're second the, the preseason East. We're third in overall preseason rankings among HBCUs behind Alabama A&M and, and A&T. So we're third overall. Um, you know, Zende, um, I think Zende left for, for a number of reasons. Um, one, he's gotten his degree from FAMU, which is first and foremost, that's, that's priority number one. Um, so he served his purpose by coming to Florida A&M and getting a degree from the top institution in America. So he's done that. Um, two, Azenda has a younger brother who starts at safety for Georgia Tech. He's got a, the youngest brother is a rising, is a senior who's one of the top 15 players in the state of Florida, top 100 in the country. And so obviously Georgia Tech being smart, which is smart, says, okay, well maybe we can get a package deal. So let's bring Azenda in. I got two brothers on the team. We probably can get the third one as well. And so I think the, the fact that you know, he's graduated, he can play his last year with his, with his brother, um, and the fact that we are very deep at wide receiver, and he, as a senior, maybe didn't see his role being maybe as big as he would have liked. And so I think a combination of things, but, you know, I, I, Zinda and I was, were texting last week. Um, still great relationship. He's a rattler, will always be a rattler, loves this place has a ton of respect for, you know, for his brothers and for the, what he's gone through over the last four years. Um, you know, but again, it, it, he served his time. He did what he, what he came here to do. And, you know, he's going to take his chances at, at the Power Five school to see if it can propel him to his ultimate goal, which is, you know, obviously playing professional football. But, you know, we wish in there the best. I'll be watching every chance I get uh, because when he looks good, it, it makes us look good too to know that a player coming from FAMU and HBCU can go to a Power Five school and have – uh, a huge impact as well. So I hope he's ACC Player of the Year this year. Yes, Coach. Um, I know you said that you were going to be making a decision about the starting quarterback this week. Were you saving for this forum right here? To tell <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I was over at uh, Florida State last night, and Coach Novell, that first question is, well, he, before he even started, he was like, any questions, but if it's about the quarterback, then no, we ain't going to answer that one tonight. Um, <laughs> so right now, we're, 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 we're basically in a, in a two-man race um, for the quarterback spot. And so 
as a staff, today's Wednesday. We'll, we'll probably take it until probably Thursday, Friday. Um, right now, Rashawn is battling a little slight kind of not injury, but it's you know he's got some little things that's keeping him from practicing the whole practice. And so, to be fair to him, we want him to get back fully healthy, which will be today or tomorrow, and then be able to make that determination of who we feel will take the first snap. Like I said, whoever takes the first snap, they're not guaranteed to take the third, right? I mean, we have three guys who we feel really good about, and it's conceivable that all three may see the field at some point, um, whether it be September 5th or sometime this season. Uh, right now, it's between Rashawn McKay, Cameron Sapp, and uh, Junior Maritovic. We got better, um, got better. Still too many pre-snap penalties. Um, so we still got to get a little bit more discipline um, in our operation, right? If, if we don't, you know, our, our toughest opponent this year will be us. You know, it won't be anybody we play. It'll be us. And so if we can not beat ourselves, good football team, great, I'm sorry, great football teams don't beat, don't beat themselves, right? When you watch the Bamas of the world, the Clemsons, the North Dakota States, those teams, it's the discipline that they play with that's the most impressive thing, right? So, of course, being that I played at Clemson, I'm able to watch them a lot. Um, you know, we able to get our hands on some Alabama film this offseason, um, studied a ton of NFL film, you know, throughout the years, and that's what you see. You know, so the first thing you, you, you look at when you turn the film on is, wow, these guys are big, they're fast, they're strong. That's the first thing that jumps off. But the immediate thing that drops off, jumps off next is how disciplined they are. When you watch the offensive line, they're going the right way. They're not taking bad steps. When you watch the receivers, they're running the right depth of their routes. They're taking good splits. When you watch the quarterbacks, they're throwing the ball on time, anticipating it, throwing guys open. When you watch the defensive line, they're not getting reached. They're standing in their gaps. I mean, so that's our goal, our mandate, is to be a disciplined football team. We have enough talent to, to run the table. There's no doubt about that. But if we, like Coach Nobel said last night, a 4-4 going the wrong direction is slow, right? <laughs> you cannot run 4-4 going the wrong way. That doesn't help us. So let's make sure that these fast wide receivers that we have know which way to go. Let's make sure that this deep, talented defensive line that Coach Patterson has knows what gap they're responsible for and stays in that gap and done freelance to try to make plays, right? It's assignment football. You never see a defensive lineman lead the team in tackles, ever, right? They should lead the team in sacks, but shouldn't lead the team in tackles. Their job is to make sure that the linebackers or the safeties lead the team in tackles. And so for them, it's about being disciplined enough to do their job on every given play. Same thing with the offensive line. So if we can do that, we can stay on side, watch the ball, line up properly, and keep ourselves ahead of the chains, Again, you, you'll see us light the scoreboard up on offense, but you'll also see us keep other teams from crossing that white goal line very often.